My name is William Justice. Today I'm going to show you how to create some really interesting effects using images and videos as masks in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. You can use masks to create transitions between videos. Or you can place videos inside of shapes and create this really interesting animated background. We're going to also use a fire video to create an animated mask and put it on top of video and show you the different kind of things that we can do when uh, applying a video as a mask. We can use the same technique and a little bit of adjustments to create effects like this. Or maybe something like this one. If you like my videos and are looking to learn more about filmmaking, DaVinci Resolve, or Fusion, um, please subscribe, comment below. I'd really love to hear from you and see what you have to say. I really appreciate everyone's feedback and support. Let's do some masking. We can take almost any image or video and use masking tricks to create some very interesting effects. But before we get started creating these effects, I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to show you how masking works with shapes and images. There's actually quite a lot I didn't fully understand until I started working with the masks. I'm going to go through this pretty quick so we can get to the good stuff. So the basic masks in Fusion are these shape masks right here. We'll just do a real quick one. We'll take a background, drag that in. We'll hit two on the viewer. I'm going to try to put my images up here and the masks on the left while we're doing this and we'll change the color to a blue. I'm going to put a mask on that. We can use this rectangle, this, the uh, ellipse, or any of these others. It's just a shape, and we'll drag it onto the blue input. So any node in Fusion that has a blue input, that's a mask. The mask is basically a way to indicate which parts of the output are shown and which are hidden. This is a solid shape in the middle with transparency around the outside, and it's sending that information into the mask input of the background. Okay, so we can do this exact same thing with an image. Let's disconnect this mask, the rectangle, and I've created this image right here. We'll put it, hit one to put it in the viewer. It's just a white rectangle in the middle with transparency around the outside. This is just a PNG image. So let's connect this up and see what happens. Into the mask input, the transparency from this image is being transferred into the background. So what if we have an image that doesn't have transparency in it? What can we do with that? That's this image right here. We'll put hit one to put that in the viewer. So it's white in the middle and it just has black around the outside. So there's no transparency in it. Let's connect it up and basically nothing happens. So we can use a bitmap node to add transparency. This is just one way of doing it. I'm going to show you another way real quick in a second. So we'll hit control space bar and search for bitmap, add that in. We'll hold shift and drag it right over that line and connect it. So it didn't do anything yet. And that's because by default, the bitmap is right over here in the in the inspector. It's looking for the alpha channel that's coming into it, and it's going to use that to set the transparency going out. Okay, so with, we have the bitmap here. We just need to adjust the channel to tell the bitmap how to work with transparency. So we're going to click on channel, and we're going to choose the luminance. And basically what that does is it means the brighter parts of the image are going to be solid, and the darker parts are going to be transparent. Okay, so what if we have a grayscale image? Let's try that. We'll drag this in and put it in the viewer. And we'll connect that up to our bitmap input. And you can see that it used the, the grayscale or the luminance changes in this image to affect the mask that's going being applied to the background. So the brighter areas are solid. And as it gets darker and darker, or actually has less luminance, it becomes more transparent. A couple options in here. We can click invert to flip the mask around. And we can adjust this. This is the bottom level for the luminance, and you see that basically what this is saying is basically it has to be pretty bright to show through. So we can come all the way up. You'll notice that the darker parts are not going to be included anymore. And then we'll pull that back down. So we can pull this down, and this is the high end of the luminance level. So what this is saying is the luminance level does not have to be very high to get that solid look. The masks can be applied to many different nodes. So right here, I have uh, some clouds, so we'll drag that in and hit 2. And this is just a video. So if we wanted to mask out parts of the video, we can take our mask and put it right there. And we have the video masked out. Because we're using images, we can actually get some really interesting shapes. I created this one here. We'll put that in the viewer. And we'll drag that into the bitmap node. And we'll put this on a background. Let's connect that with the media in on a background. We'll set it to like a, like a green and connect with the mask and hit two. So you can see we have that right there. 
So this is an example of the mask being applied to the merge input. So with a merge node, the green is the input and the mask is used to mask out or set which parts of the input are going to be applied to the merge. Okay, let's work with a solid image here. I got this solid black and white one. We're gonna put that in the viewer up here and we're gonna connect that into the bitmap. So the interesting thing here, and this is what I, I didn't know until recently, was that we don't actually have to use this bitmap. So if we delete out the bitmap, the there's no masking applied. Let's click on the merge node and then click the settings over here. And you'll see that we have the same alpha channel and a lot of the same settings from the bitmap node. If we disconnect the mask, the settings go away. We'll connect back up the mask and we have them in there. So just like before, we can say, well, we're not gonna use the alpha channel from the image on the left because there's not one. Let's go ahead and use the luminance. And we get our mask right back. Um, didn't have to use the bitmap node. So there's a lot of these nodes, including the background and some of the others that have the uh, these masking options. And for some reason, the media in does not. Okay, so you notice on this merge, we, there's the channel, there's a few other things in here. Um, one of them is saturation. So we can also use the saturation of an image to affect the mask. So we're gonna bring this image in. You'll see that I have this um, the saturated area from the highly saturated to washed out with no color. The saturation is basically the amount of color that's in there. And let's connect that up to the mask input and we'll hit merge. So right now it's based on luminance. So let's switch this to saturation. And what we did was we said, okay, we're gonna use the saturation level of this image right here for our mask. So the highly saturated areas with more color are gonna show and the, and the lower saturated areas are going to be more transparent. So the last masking thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna take a background and we'll put it in both viewers, make it blue. Um, so we can actually use a background or other nodes in Resolve as a mask. So we're gonna take the background over on the left and I'm just gonna make a gradient out of that. So we're gonna do a, let's do a vertical gradient. It's gonna go from white to black. The, this is our blue background. We can connect up this as an input. On the background, we'll go to the settings and we're gonna say the channel is luminance. We're able to do nodes and visuals created in Fusion as masks. All right, so now that we know a little bit how the masks work, let's uh, create some elements from the beginning of this video. I'm gonna go pretty quick. I really just wanna give you some ideas of some different kinds of things that you can do with masks. We're gonna start out by putting the uh, video inside of the hexagon shape using a mask. So we're gonna drag the hexagon in. We'll put that in viewer one and connect it up to the media out and put that in viewer two. Then we're gonna take this video right here and we'll put that in viewer two so you can see what it looks like. And we're gonna merge that in with the hexagon and it's gonna be on top of it. Now all we do have to do is use this hexagon shape to mask out the video. We'll connect the output of the hexagon into the mask area of the media in. So let's select the media out so we can see what that looks like and go to the merge and just bump down the size a bit and we have a border. So let's flip over to the timeline and you can take this and transform it and move it around and really do just about anything you want to with it. Let's use some animated black and white masks to create some transitions. So I got two video clips here. We're gonna bring them into Fusion. We'll put them up in the viewers. We're gonna put the uh, put this one on top by dragging it onto the output of the other one and they're merged. And we'll connect the merge to the media out. So all we need to do now is use one of these black and white images to create the transition. It's gonna use the, in this case, we'll put it in viewer one so we're gonna use the luminance values of the black and white as a mask. We'll connect it up to the mask of merge. Click merge, go to the settings, and we're gonna choose the luminance channel. And we'll take a look at what we have. Hit uh, two on the media out. Very simple. Let me show you how I set up the hex background animation with lines in the beginning of the video. I started by creating a hex shape in Photoshop right here, and you can notice there's a little bit of transparency in between, between each of the hexagons. I'm gonna put that on a black background, and we're gonna add a merge node. We're gonna put a background on top of the merge node and mask that out to create the lines. Let's make it green. Let's see what that merge looks like. So it's solid right now until we add this mask and we just need to go to the background node, the settings, and invert the mask. And you can see we have our lines there. The next step was I added a glow. I'm 
Now we just need to create an animated mask on this merge down here. Let's just, uh, we'll do a real simple one with a circle. We're going to uncheck solid and give it some border width and soften the edge up, make it a little bit smaller. And we just need to animate this now. So we'll go to set around frame, frame 100 and make it really big. We'll set keyframes, go to the first frame and shrink it down really small. Move the position right in the middle here so you can't see it very well. And that's about it. The other thing I did is I added a grid warp down here on this mask to try to make it so it wasn't a perfect circle. Obviously you could use any of these other shapes to do similar things and animate them. So that just makes the shape a little bit irregular as it's moving. Let's have a little bit of fun with some fire. I have this fire clip right here. Let's see if we can turn this and use it as a mask. So I got a clip of me talking right here. We're going to put that on a black background. And we're going to use, let's see, go to the media out. So that's what we have right now. We're going to use the fire as a mask. I'm going to drag that to the mask input. Go to the merge, hit settings, and choose the channel as luminance. And we have a real quick effect with uh, my face in the fire there. Now another thing we can do is we can actually colorize this background to create some interesting effects. We'll do a, let's do a gradient. We'll do a little bit of green and the bottom gradient we'll do a blue. And on the merge we're going to swap the inputs. Hit control T. So there we go. We have a blue green fire right on top of me. We basically have the background here and we're masking, we're masking it out and putting it on top of this right here. You can change any color here. If you want to make it more fire-like, you could go red and a little bit of yellow or orange. Okay, I hope you learned something in this video and maybe got some ideas from some different things and effects you can do and you can put together using masks. If you'd like to learn more about DaVinci Resolve or Fusion, um, go to my channel and check out some of my other videos or pick one of these suggested videos from YouTube. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and comment below to follow my progress.